And this is really the focus of a lot of our current work, is understanding the influence of the decision to have children on a woman's life and how it differs from that decision in a man's life, given men's much longer periods of fertility, and how those decisions can be softened by modern universities in the sense of made more, more facilitated so that women can have children and combine the having of children with a career. That turns out to be the single largest impediment to women is not even having kids, but the plan to have kids. So if you look at women who are in graduate school in math intensive fields like engineering, physics, chemistry, computer science, mathematics, economics, just the plan to have kids is a predictor of who will drop out, um, either in graduate school, after graduate school, or during a postdoctoral training fellowship. Just the aspiration to have kids. An interesting finding, too, is that men with children are the most hireable group of people. Everyone wants to hire a family man. A woman with children is seen as a, an overworked, harried person, and she may be viewed as highly competent, but she's also somewhat rightfully viewed as having taken on more in her life than does a man with children, because women are seen as, and in re reality do, more of the housework and the maintenance of the home. And in fact, the data show that women with children work over 100 hours a week across all life domains, across their professional life, their personal life, child caring. Men with children only work 88 hours a week across all life domains. And both men and women without children work 78 hours a week across all life domains. The fact that it actually is shown in modern research to be true helps us to understand why women leave the academic tenure track pipeline. I mean, they're trained for it. They matriculate in college. They do better than boys in grades in K through 12 education, and they still do better than men in college. And they matriculate, they graduate, they get into PhD programs. They do very well in them. Then what happens to them? I mean, where are they? Why is it that the, there are such low numbers of women, especially senior women, in the math-based fields in the academy? So you have to look at the question and ask, what is it about those fields? And it's a combination of the fact that there's fewer women to start out with at the very beginning who are interested in those fields, but there's still a lot of women. But then they get disenfranchised by the notion that preparing a tenurable portfolio of work will put them in a position of doing this enormously costly set of, of years of work at the exact same time that they're going to be at the end of their range of fertile years, and so they have to have their children then as well. Women express regrets either not having kids or not having as many kids as they wanted, uh, or conversely, and not having the career that they wanted. So a lot of them actually, they don't drop out totally when they, when they decide they want to have kids. They end up at a community college, for example, or as an adjunct somewhere where the pay is really quite low and unreliable. So down the road, they, they profess to be less content, less satisfied than the men. The problem isn't discrimination. The problem is a system that makes it hard to do everything in one eight-year period of time. So I think it's important to distinguish between discrimination against women's work products and what they accomplish and latent environmental biases that make it hard for women with their biological constraints to do everything in a certain period of time. The reason this is important is because it suggests one or another of two very, very different policy paths. The one is, if you think that women's underrepresentation in the math intensive fields is because there's biases against them publishing their work or getting funded or being interviewed or hired, then what you do is you have gender sensitivity training of reviewers, of personnel committee members, and so on. If on the other hand you say, no, the underrepresentation, the most important cause, is because of what we mentioned earlier, this work-family imbalance and women struggling to try to do both, but concluding only one is really feasible, that suggests a very different set of policies.